Hello everybody and welcome to a new series I'm starting, it's a little small series, two parts, it's about reversing games that are made with uh, Unity Engine. So before we start, I just want to give a special thanks to Zat from Unknown Cheats, he created a great article on this subject which I learned from. So what is a Unity game? A Unity game is any game that's made with Unity Engine. Uh, some of the most popular games that are made with it include Among Us, Rust, Firewatch, Escape from Tarkov, and more. So uh, we're going to go over kind of just like the basics of Unity Engine. Um, because if we want to reverse the Unity game, it's pretty essential that we need to have a basic understanding of how that engine works. Um, so Unity games are built with game objects. Um, so for example, you can see in the screenshot there's a cube. Uh, the, uh, the cube then has attributes um, in engine. They are called components. So from now on, just think of them as components, um, like transform. And that transform property contains data like position, scale, and rotation. So if you wanted to access this, you could do, you know, game object dot transform dot position equals whatever. Um, so here we can see uh, the rotation, and you can see the position here. And this is from inside Unity Engine. This is just the viewport. So now we're going to talk about components. Components can be viewed in the inspector, which is a tab in the Unity editor that allows us to see the components of any given object. So um, in the last slide, we talked about the transform attribute. So you can see right here in the inspector, there's transform. We have position, rotation, and scale. Um, we can also put scripts on these game objects. So these scripts are written code that manipulates the game objects. And you can also create game logic with these. Um, they're also components. Um, and this is all from the Unity editor, these screenshots. We're not going to be working with the Unity editor. But it's just, again, it's good to just have a basic understanding of how it works so that we can reverse it easier. So, more about scripts. So, uh, Unity scripts are written in C Sharp. Unity scripts have built in methods. Um, they are also written in separate classes that inherit mono behavior. A few of these methods include start. Uh, this method is called once when the game object is activated. Um, uh, the update method is called every tick. Um, the fixed update method is similar to the, up the update method, except up uh, fixed update is called every frame versus every tick. Um, and then on GUI is the drawing method. Um, so when, we're, when we get to UI and all that and making a, a menu in the next uh, tutorial, we're going to be using that a lot. So to the left, you can see we have a, this example script. And this example script has stuff like our update method, our start method, and it also inherits mono behavior and it uses Unity Engine. So how do we access these scripts? So we're going to look at the file structure of a game. So uh, for example, right here, this is Paint Warfare. But all the scripts are compiled into two DLLs. Uh, these DLLs are called Assembly C Sharp and Assembly C Sharp First Pass. And they can be found in the root directory of the folder. And then if you go into the game name underscore data, and then into the managed folder. So for example, in this game, we're in the root directory. This is called Paint Warfare. This is what we're going to be using for the tutorials. You can use whatever game you want, but this is just going to be the example uh, game. So we can go here into our data folder and then go into the managed folder here. And we can see these two DLLs. Uh, these contain all of the source code for the game. So like the classes, the scripts, all that good stuff. Um, and the other DLLs here are like system DLLs or engine DLLs. Uh, we don't really need to mess with them. So uh, more on how do we access the scripts, how do we actually read the um, uh, source code of the game. So we compile the DLLs with a software called DNSpy, and this allows us to view the classes and the namespaces of these scripts. So in this video, we're going to be creating our own DLL that we inject into the process using a mono injector. This is different than you know a normal injector that you might use for other games. So right here, I just have um, DNSpy's release page pulled up. Personally, I use the DNSpy uh, net version here, so I'd recommend downloading this and then extracting it. And then also, we talked about the mono injector, which is different from a normal injector. Um, I use the GUI version here. It's also the release page. I'm going to be uh, putting these two links in the uh, description. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our uh, game. So, I'm using Paint Warfare. You can use whatever game you want. Just make sure that we have access to those two DLLs in the managed folders like I talked about earlier. So uh, what we're going to do, we're just going to go to our data folder, go into the managed folder, and then we can see these two DLLs, our assembly C sharp first pass and the assembly C sharp. So we're just going to open up DNSpy. So I just have it pulled up here. 
Once you extract it, it should look something like this. Just launch dnspy.exe. And then we can go over to our managed folder here. And we can just drag in these two DLLs, drag and drop, just like that. And here we're going to just view, uh, view the code. Some games you can just edit it directly, but most of the time you just don't want to do that. So uh, you're just going to be looking for basically the, the game's uh, scripts. So if we look in our silly C Sharp first pass here, there's not really anything for the game. It's just Steam stuff and then uh, utility DLL. So that's that's not the right uh, DLL here. Um, the code can be in either, might be in both, might be one or the other, it just depends on the game. Uh, for this game specifically, it's in the assembly C Sharp folder. And then this is where um, a game, if it uses its own namespace, so if it uh, is using, you know, I don't know, probably it's usually the name of the, you know, game developer and then dot the game name. Um, then it would be in that. So, for example, uh, photon.chat, that is a namespace. Um, but if it doesn't have a namespace, then it'll just be in this dash section here. So if we open this up, we can see some promising stuff like boat player, bullet script. So we're just going to be looking for something like FPS controller. So we can look right here, FPS controller. In this video, we're going to be um, doing an infinite ammo cheat. So we can just uh, do control F in here and look for ammo. We can see there's no results. So we're just going to keep looking. Maybe we can find something like a weapon class. Keep scrolling. There we go, weapon class. So we can just search for ammo. And we can see there's this dot ammo. So if we scroll all the way down here, we can see uh, where these variables are actually declared. So there's things like damage, fire rate, range, and then here we have ammo. So let's get into uh, Visual Studio so we can go on to creating our own DLL. So once you're in Visual Studio here, you want to click on Create New Project, and then select Class Library. If you don't have that, just go to this drop down here, go to C Sharp, and then go to Class Library. And then press Next, and then we can call whatever you want. I'm just going to call it uh, Tutorial Cheat. And then we're going to just press Create. All right. So once we have this, um, we are going to rename this class one to loader. And then just press yes, that way it renames those here. And we actually don't need to do using system. Uh, so once we have that, we are going to add a reference to our um, Unity Engine DLLs and our assembly C Sharp DLLs. This way we can access the game's scripts and we can also access Unity Engine stuff. So we're just going to go over to this dependencies tab here and then press add reference and then you want to go to browse and then it automatically just pulled up um, my folder where it is. Um, it probably won't for you because I've already gone here um, but just locate your managed folder and then you want to just um, do select these two assembly C sharp DLLs and then uh, scroll down and then you can just uh, press control and do the rest of them. So it's very important that you don't do any of the system ones because it could mess up your um, it could mess up your stuff. So just make sure that you're only selecting the assembly C sharp ones and you're only selecting the ones that start with Unity. So like Unity Engine, that that stuff is good, and also just Unity. Um, so for example, it's Unity Text Mesh Pro. That's fine. So once we have all of those added, uh, just press Add and press OK. So your Visual Studio might stop responding. Don't worry, this happens to basically everyone. So it's just part of what happens because you're adding so many references. So just wait a few seconds and it should uh, fix it up and your uh, dependencies, your references will be added. All right, so my stuff is added. And just to check that it was, I can go to dependencies, go to assemblies, and I can see I have assembly C Sharp, assembly C Sharp first pass. I also have all of my Unity engine stuff. So I'm just going to minimize this tab again, and then I'm going to go up top here, and then I'm going to do using Unity Engine so that we can actually use the Unity Engine uh, namespace and have access to things like game objects. So this loader class here, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to create a game object, and then that game object is going to hold a script, and that script will then have all of our, you know, infinite ammo, all that stuff. 
Um, so yeah, so to do that, we're just going to do a uh, public static void init. All right, and then we're going to do loader dot load, and this is going to be equal to new game object. All right, and then at the bottom here, we got to do a private static game object, and then we're just going to call it load. And now we're just going to do loader dot load and then dot add component and this is where we're going to be actually adding the uh, script so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go and create a new class here so right click press add new item and then I'm just going to call it hacks alright and once I have this we can just go back into unity and then we're going to or sorry not unity uh, loader.cs so in our loader uh, class, we're just going to do hacks. So the name of our script right here, and then a parentheses and a semicolon. All right, so once we have add component hacks, you can see that we actually have an error here. And the reason this is, is because in our hacks class here, we're not using mono behavior. So if we just do that, save that, our error should go away. There we go. So just to walk you guys through what we're doing here is um, in our uh, init method, we are creating a new game object called loader.load and then on that uh, uh, game object we are creating a new script which is the script right here All right and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make sure that it doesn't immediately delete that game object so when it's loaded we're just gonna do uh, we're gonna make sure that it doesn't get deleted so unity engine dot object dot don't destroy on load and then just do loader.load Alright, uh, so once we have that, uh, we have basically the all well, the basics of our loader. So real quick in our hacks class, we can delete all that system stuff. Um, and we're going to create an unload method so we can actually take out the DLL. So, uninject it rather. So we're going to do a public static void and then we're going to call this unload. Alright, and then we're just going to do underscore unload alright and then uh, the reason we're calling this method here underscore unload and it's giving us an error is because we don't actually have a method uh, called that so we're going to do a private static void underscore unload alright and then we're going to do game object dot destroy and then we're going to destroy our uh, load game object here all right, there. We go. So now, if we call this unload fun uh, unload method, um, it will just uh, uninject our DLL. So technically, it's not uninjecting it; it's just deleting the game object that has the script on it. But there we go. So now, what we're gonna do is we can go into our hacks class here, and uh, like we talked about earlier, we have our start function and we have our sorry, not function method. Uh, and we also have our update method. So we're going to just create those now. Do public void start and then public void update. Now if you've actually ever used Unity Engine, you'll notice that this script right here looks pretty sim uh, similar to what you would be using uh, just coding in Unity Engine and creating a game. And that's because we are just using Unity Engine and we're essentially just creating a script like you would in Unity, um, except we're using it for infinite ammo. So what we're going to do is we have, if we go into DNSpy, we have our weapon class, right? So we have to be able to access this ammo, but to do that we actually have to be able to access this class as well. So to do that, um, we can just create a new uh, uh, object, and that's just called weapon, right? So we're going to do weapon weapon. So using that class weapon, we're creating an object called weapon. Um, and then we're just going to set that equal to find object of type and then weapon. So from here, we can just um, uh, call our ammo. So what we're going to do, we're going to do weapon dot ammo equals what uh, ten thousand, whatever, um, whatever number you want to do. 
Alright, and then one other thing we're going to do is just to be able to actually uninject uh, what we just did. We're going to do if input dot get key down. And this is just the way that Unity Engine detects if a key is pressed. And then we're going to do key code. So Unity Engine uses key codes. And then um, we're just going to do whatever button you want. I'm going to do delete. All right. And then we're going to call that loader.unload function. So loader.unload. All right. There we go. So now we have our loader class, which creates a game object, and then it adds a script to it. And then that script sets the ammo to whatever number you want. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go to the build tab here, press build solution. And then you can see that it's built here. So I can just copy this path here, paste it in here, open file location. And there's probably going to be a lot of DLLs because it uh, these are just the references that we have. Um, so this is the only one we really care about, tutorialcheat.dll. So like I talked about earlier, we need to use a mono injector, right? So uh, if you download that one that I recommended, the GUI version, uh, you should see uh, you have assembly, uh, sorry, not assembly, sharp mono injector.dll and you have uh, SMI underscore GUI.exe. So what we're going to do is we're just going to launch that. And once that's launched, uh, you should just see a little GUI here. So what we need to do is we need to actually launch the game. So I'm just going to go over to um, Paint Warfare. All right, so once I'm in Paint Warfare, I'm just going to launch that. And then we're going to go into the game. All right, so once I'm in the game, we can see that I have 32 bullets. And then we're just going to go over to our injector here. And then we press refresh on the process, and it's going to find that uh, Paint Warfare process. And now it asks us uh, what assembly we want to inject. So um, we're just going to go find that DLL. So if we just uh, go right here, we paste that path to the DLL, our uh, built DLL. So tutorialcheat.dll, press open, and then the class name. So this is what we want to inject. So the class we're injecting is called loader. So right here, loader. And then the method is in it. So we can see here, we have our public class loader. That's the class we're injecting. And then the method is in it. Let's put that in. And then if we inject that, go into our game and uh, shoot, we should see we have infinite ammo. So there you go. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, there's going to be another part coming out uh, soon. And we're going to be creating a GUI using Unity Engine's built-in UI system.